Hi, my name is Paul Han. I'm a product manager here at AMX. We're coming to you from the development lab inside AMX today, and we're going to talk about the Innova DGX digital media switching systems. Now, specifically, we're going to talk about the Innova DGX 16 and 32 input and output board options. The 16s and 32s accept the same input and output board, so we'll just talk about the boards, but keep in mind they're also usable in the 16s. So let's take a look at it. We're looking at a back of an Innova DGX32 system. Now, inputs are on the left and outputs are on the right, and we go from left to right on the 32 for inputs and outputs. So let's start with the first board, which is an HDMI input board. This board accepts HDMI with uh, HDCP and embedded audio from local source devices. Now, for all of the inputs and output boards, we should note that every board contains inputs or outputs for four different signals. So in this case, I'll have inputs for four H local HDMI sources. I have a couple more of the same versions there, so we'll move till we find the new one, which is the DXLink input board. Now, DXLink inputs receive uh, transmitted inputs from DXLink transmitters. There's a couple different kinds of DXLink transmitters. One of them is for digital signals only, and the other one is for uh, multi-format, which accepts both digital and analog sources into the DXLink transmitters. Those are also HDMI with HDCP compliant as well. Next we see DVI transmitters or input boards. Now th these input boards, although they're DVI connectors on them, can also accept HDMI with HDCP signals via an appropriate conversion cable. The next boards we see are fiber inputs. These receive transmitted inputs from uh, DGX fiber transmitters over SC multi-mode fiber up to 3,000 feet from the Innova DGX system. I should note that the fiber input boards or output boards don't handle HDCP, so I would use these for non-HDCP compliant source devices. But they're a great way to go uh, either between facilities or between matrix switching systems. As we move to the output side, all of the output board styles that we just saw on the input side are, all, are available on the output side. So we'll see HDMI, DX link to receivers, DVI, and fiber outputs to fiber DGX receivers. Now it's important to note that all of these outputs, either if they're transmitted at the receiver um, or if they're local outputs like the HDMI and the DVI, all of these boards have smart scale functionality built in. So there's a scaler for each output built into this board. But we'll talk about smart scale in a different video, but it's important to note that it's there. Finally, the audio insert extract boards. Now on the left and the right hand side of this matrix, we see the audio insert extract board slot. Now, because it's a special slot, I'm not consuming video input or output board positions. But what I do gain by adding these boards in either the input or the output side is a way to access the embedded audio um, on the first 16 inputs or the first 16 outputs, if I load it on the output side. And that allows me to get a hold of the embedded audio and remove it locally or to add in audio to make it an embedded part of that HDMI line for video only style inputs. It really adds a great deal of flexibility to the overall ANOVA DGX system. And again, it's a great option to use either on the input or output side or both. So that's really about it. The boards are really, really straightforward. But if you'd like to find out more information about the Innova DGX input output boards, please feel free to go to www.amx.com to learn more. Thanks so much.